Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're comparing the new top tier Radeon 780M integrated graphics to the older 680M graphics as a brief follow up to the previous video. The systems I'm using are the Minisforum UM690 and the 790 Pro. Both have 8 core 16 thread Ryzen 9 CPUs, but of course we can't use the same processor for the comparisons as the newer one has the newer graphics built in and vice versa. I have however installed the same 16 gigs of 5600 megahertz DDR5 in both PCs. The 690 will use about 54 watts max and the 790 Pro around 60 in its default balanced mode. In both cases this is enough to allow the APUs to hit their max GPU boost clocks of 2400 and 2800 megahertz respectively. The newer 780M is RDNA3 based and the 680M is RDNA2. So how do these compare? Well you've seen most of the cyberpunk result by now, but here the 780M does pull ahead by a few frames and the percentile lows are improved as well, especially that 0.1% figure. For Forza Horizon 5, this time I used the medium preset I used high yesterday and got a VRAM warning with the 780M, so I thought medium was best. It's worth mentioning that with the 780M graphics and the Ryzen 9 7940HS, I had to get the drivers from the Minis Forum site. Couldn't find them on the AMD site at the time of this video, so that tells me that there is definitely room for improvement, and I definitely expect the 780M to pull ahead a little bit more as well as we move into the future. That's not a guarantee, but I'd expect to see a few improvements. Even so, this APU still pulled ahead with 75 FPS here, and once again those percentile lows were improved, though not by as much as they were in Cyberpunk. For Grand Theft Auto 5, I've mentioned before that the 680M does have a few issues, but it's mostly with the percentile lows. I've tested this on a few systems, the average is 90 FPS, so it's still very solid, and the percentile lows were okay. As I mentioned, I've tested this on a few 680M based systems and often found that there are a few little dips and drops here and there. These issues seem to be alleviated with the 780M though. The average frame rate was improved, but where we saw the most difference was with those percentile figures once again. Definitely a smoother experience here, and the game looks pretty good with the high textures and everything else set to normal. For Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, I jumped into a bot match here just to try and keep both scenarios as close as possible, and with the 680M we saw 72 FPS on average with some solid percentile figures. Now I'm not saying for a minute that the 680M isn't still capable because it is. It's still very impressive just because it's slightly older doesn't mean it's obsolete by any means and it will still give a lot of older discrete cards a good run for their money as this result proves. The 780M pulls ahead a little bit once again with the average figure and with those percentile lows but this is one of those cases where if I didn't have an FPS overlay enabled I probably couldn't feel the difference with the gameplay. For Red Dead Redemption 2, things were a little smoother with the 780M. It still impresses me though that this much power can be crammed into one of these tiny machines. And if you haven't guessed by now, I am a big fan of Minis Forum systems. And um, I'm always looking forward to seeing what they're going to produce next. I think that these are fantastic for anyone who also doesn't want something that consumes a lot of power. But wants to be able to play a few games. And the fact you can even play AAA titles too, well, integrated graphics have come a long way in recent times. I basically feel the same as I did yesterday. The 780M is a very impressive um, integrated graphics solution as part of the 7940HS, which is just really quick, really snappy to use. The 680M, if you want to buy something like the UM690, for example, I'll leave a link to that as well. It's a little bit cheaper. Um, than the UM790 Pro, but I'll leave a link to both. Both very impressive. Always interested to see how integrated graphics are improving as we move through 2023. And I think the fact that you can actually play modern titles and triple A demanding games without a card is, well, I've probably said the word impressive a few too many times. Thank you for watching though. I hope this video has been interesting because a few of you were asking for it. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.